Hi guys, welcome back again to another series of um, history current affairs for prelims 2023 that I'm doing. This is your faculty, Ranganathan S. Vian Kondala, and I'm going to continue the discussion on history current affairs 2023 for prelims. Now, the last few videos, we've been obviously observing some of the important uh, history current affairs topics, some important uh, for your exam, some which you obviously need to significantly know. Continuing with that series, now let us, I'll give you a quick overview of uh, the Indo China War in 1962. Look, this year marks um, 60 years of 60th anniversary of the Indo China War. Indo China War was basically an untriggered, unexpected war, or you can say untriggered, unexpected invasion which was imposed on India by the people's republic of china it was it was essentially an all-out war mainly to resolve the boundary disputes that uh, india and china had as of 1947 india's independence in 1948 formation of the people's republic of china i mean look uh, the border between india and china is generally called line of actual control that's uh, l a c line of actual control now uh, the problem comes is mainly some areas like Damchok, Trighai, Zumshele, Pangzusho, Shumar and Swakum Gap mainly in Himachal in the Kaurik, Shipkila region and also the regions of Arunachal mainly the Tawang territories okay Rundongchu, Asafila, Longju, Dishu, Yangze, Fishtail 1 and uh, Fishnail 1 and Fishtail 2 and in mainly in the Bang Valley. Even in Uttarakhand, Barahoti and Pulang Sundabi do have uh, disputes. 3,488 kilometers is the line of actual control which India and China have uh, as, a, as a sort of a virtual border. And it is one of the most heavily patrolled borders of international countries in the world. The border between India and China remains pretty disputed from the pre-independence era because look the McMahon line which is the border in the eastern sector was originally drawn in 1914 without a survey taking China into its confidence and because the the idea of McMahon line is basically British contribution to establish border between India and Tibet <laughs> but once Tibet was conquered by China China rejected or China um disregarded the existence of McMahon line or uh, even china took every effort to openly declare that it does not recognize the presence of McMahon line or the borders of McMahon line since at the time of signing of the McMahon line china was not a party to the movement the party to the drawing the main reason for indochina war has always been the dispute over the sovereignty of the widely separated um, Aksai Chin region in the uh, in near Ladakh and uh, Tawang region near Arunachal Pradesh. So this, these two places remain a major issue of uh, contention between India and uh, China. India claims accession to be part of Ladakh, whereas China claims accession to be part of its uh, Xinjiang province. Similarly, India remained unaware that most of the area by, uh, even at the time they occupied accession, in fact, China had been well, well using accession and India was not aware of it. Eventually, by 1957, the Chinese built a 220 kilometer long road. And it was only after the completion of the entire project that China even openly declared that they have uh, built a road in Indian territory, India's controlled uh, Ladakh uh, region of Aksai Chin. And uh, in 1954, there was an agreement called the Tibet Agreement where India consciously avoided discussions about the border, leaving actually the border question open. See, many historians believe, and many um, even political thinkers and uh, diplomats um, consider that India actually disregarding any discussions on border has left the border question vague. Now, given that the border question is vague, there was no specific solution coming to the border issue. The meeting between Nehru and Chinese Premier Zhao Wanlai 
even in the 50s failed to resolve the dispute because the problem is the border question is vague and we've ne india china never really took serious attempts to discuss and resolve the issue india was basically misguided by the optimism shown by chinese about the moral superiority and peaceful intentions of chinese leadership in fact china time and again back in the 40, 50s and 60s kept on saying hindi i mean china did um, highlight its intentions of peace but it is only later we realize that China only has an intention of peace, but never the attitude of actually keeping peace. It resulted in a weak Indian army that, because because Chinese were able to successfully bluff us into trust, into making us a friend. We never we were ill prepared for any sort of war or even we were ill equipped for any sort of dispute with Chinese. And. Uh, India also never really had a very, I mean, in those days, we never, est uh, we underestimated the strength of Indian Air Force and uh, also political interference was very high. Um, basically, in the Indochina war, the reason why we lost the Indochina war is because um, there has, there had been consistent political interference to keep it a minimal war from the Indian side. But eventually, result of all these three, like, lack of repression, over-optimism, and the political interference in military management eventually led to Chinese victory. Chinese won. It occupied, Chinese occupied a large part of Ladakh, Arunachal, but also eventually returned these territories, but retained control of approximately 38,000 square kilometers of Aksai Chin in Ladakh. So, Indo-China War, 60th anniversary, very, very important, and the way um, eventually, India treated China or China treated India became a very strong pillar in the subsequent coming Indo-China friendships. And after that, India never trusted Chinese. Why do we have so much of trust deficit with China is mainly because of the attitude they shown because they made us trust by highlighting their peaceful intentions, but in reality, they had no intentions to maintain peace. No. Last year, another current affairs, guys, last year, Mohenjo-daro in Pakistan had been in news. Pakistan's own historical departments, equivalent of Archaeological Survey of Pak India in Pakistan, uh, an archaeological department, the history department, uh, they actually openly said that Mohenjo-daro, which is a Pakistan's UNESCO World Heritage Site, is on the verge of actually losing its UNESCO World Heritage status because of lack of preservation, conservation, and lack of funds to maintain uh, the Mohenjo-daro state. Mohenjo-daro is an Indus Valley settlement or Indus Valley site located in present-day Larkana district of Sindh on the banks of Indus River. Originally, it was excavated in 1921 by R.D. Banerjee, Sir Akhalas Banerjee, Indian archaeologist. Maybe, see, as I said, Pakistan recently said that maybe, maybe the you know, World Heritage List may remove uh, Ms. Mohanjadaro if urgent attention to conservation and restoration is not given by the government of Pakistan. Mohanjadaro is located in Larkan districts of Sindh. See, Mohanjadaro is a typical classical example of the Indus Valley architecture with block housing, um, grid plan structure, see roads and roads are perfectly in grid structure and two part housing, the upper uh, upraised platform and uh, lower city so all the classic features of indus valley civilization are all observed in mohenjo-daro the two part city one is lower platform one is the higher upraised platform indus valley civil um, mohenjo-daro mohenjo-daro is basically a group of mounds and ruins literally the word mohenjo-daro means mound of the dead Approximately 5,000 year old archaeological site located about 80 kilometers off the city of Sukur. Mohenjo-daro is known to be one of the most popular, well-planned cities of ancient civilization. In fact, one of the first planned cities of ancient civilization. It houses, the houses in Mohenjo-daro had bathrooms, they were connected to roads, they had grid planning, they had street lamps, they had well laid out streets, everything. The sheer size of the city particularly for a period 5,000 years in back in the history and its provision of public buildings and facilities 
definitely suggests that it was not just a city but rather a well established civilization with a completely existing social organization mohenjo-daro is considered the most advanced city of the indus valley period and of its time actually with sophisticated civil engineering and urban planning in fact this is the higher city this is the lower platform if 400 i mean one of the according to one of the estimates given by r sharma historian if 400 workers work if sorry <laughs> with with 10000 workers work 400 days continuously then we will be able to build a city like mohenjodaro mohenjodaro had a beautiful discovery called the great grand rio mohenjodaro it consisted of 27 blocks of brickwork criss crossed with ventilation channel and below the granaries were brick loading um, bays and grains were raised for citadel for storage so also there was grain thrashing centers we observe the locations of grain thrashing platforms see while many have, some historians do have a doubt if this is really uh, anything to do with a granary but it is certain that such a large structure might have been definitely used for if not for granary but for storing something significantly important mohenjodaro is on the banks of indus valley river indus river it was excavated at rd banerjee 1922 it is one of the largest indus valley sites literally means mount of the dead and granary is the largest along with great bath is the most unique construction great bath and in mohenjodaro we also see lot of copper tools so copper ornaments toys and tools we see all the three copper toys copper ornaments and copper tools great bath might have been uh, it's basically a stepped water tank most probably for some sort of ritual bathing with baked bricks and gypsum it had galleries and the galleries were like small rooms with prayer house bronze girl statue dancing girl statue was also found mohenjodaro also shows examples of seals seals are like little stone slabs of 2 square inch by 2 inches 2 square inches most popular pasupati nada seal unicorn seal and mother goddess seal popular excavations of mohenjodaro the great bath a stepped water tank the great granary the storehouse of grains unicorn seal most number of unicorn seal were observed in mohenjodaro bronze girl statue made with lost wax technique a uh, seal of a man with deer elephant tiger and rhinoceros considered pasupati nada seal steatite uh, statue of a bearded priest and a bearded man and bronze and bronze buffaloes or bronze dolls or bronze statues of buffalo have also been observed in mohenjodaro now see the lost wax technique even remains the most popular suppose the, the way to lost wax technique is suppose if i want to make a bronze statue of this particular pen so first i'll make a wax model of this pen then coat it uh, cover it with clay let it dry once it is dry i'll bake it as i'm baking the clay outside will become hardened but inside the wax will melt i will put a small hole and remove all the wax then I, all i will have is a clay hollow in this clay hollow i'll pour liquid bronze let it cool down once it is cooled down i'll chip off the clay and i will get is a bronze statue of the very pen that i'm actually showing you so the, the since in this technique a lot of wax is used and it is melted and removed it is generally called lost wax technique even today this remains a very important technique being used by people in the world or people in india okay that's mohenjodaro why mohenjodaro was in news is because in the context that mohenjodaro is a pakistan's a unesco world heritage site and it is on the verge of actually losing its uh, unesco world heritage status now another uh, temple 
of Jammu, which was actually news, is the Martha and Sun Temple. Martha and Sun Temple is basically a Hindu temple attributed to the Karkota king Lalita Aditya Muktibada, Sri Lalita Aditya Muktibada. In fact, he is generally considered the most popular, most successful and popular king of Jammu. Okay. Now, the reason why this was actually news is because the, you know, some of the religious scholars, uh, religious people were trying to do some yagna in this temple and Martha's Sun Temple is an ASA protected monument. So, there was objection from the government. The temple is located in the city of Anantanag in Kashmir Valley of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, India. It is dedicated to Surya Deva, the chief solar deity of Hinduism. Surya is also known by the Sanskrit name Martha. The sun, the temple was destroyed by Shikans, uh, Sikandar Shah Miri, an Islamic invader. ASI recently objected to the Navagraha Ashtamangalam Puja on the premises of Martan Temple since it is a heritage site. See, Martan Temple has three distinct chambers unique to Martan Temple. The Mandapa, the Garbagriha and the Antralaya. Ant Mandapa is the pillared hall. Garbagriha is where the deity is present, the Surya Bhagavan is present. Antralya is the area between the Mandapa and the Garbhagriha, that inner, inner sanctum. Inner sanctum, that is where even today the priest actually sits. The temple is built in a very unique Kashmiri style, though it has definitely um, highlighting Gandhara influences. So, Martha and Sun Temple was in news, and then there is a small update about Dara Shiko. Dara Shiko has been in news consistently over the last two years. Archaeological Survey of India, Am Amit Shah, um, BJP, continuously the political discussions have happened about uh, Dara Shiko. Dara Shiko is um, the eldest, is, uh, is the son of uh, Shah Jahan, uh, Shah Jahan actually, brother of Aurangzeb and Jahan Aradegam. No. Why this was in news is mainly, Vice President of, Vice President recently released the Arabic version of Majma al Bahrain. Of Dara Shiko. Dara Shiko wrote a famous Dara Shiko, Dara Shiko is a writer. So one of his most famous books is Majma ul Bahrain. Majma ul Bahrain it literally means the confluence of two oceans. Basically, it throws invaluable light into similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Uh, basically, trying to help uh, religious cooperation and religious coexistence and unity among Indians. In the book, Dara Shiko even attempts to list one by one all the commonalities between Hinduism and Islam and he eventually came to conclusion that the difference between Islam and Hinduism is essentially verbal but nothing spiritual. Dara Shiko, just to give you a quick background of who he is, he is the son of Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan and brother of Mughal Emperor uh, Aurangzeb. He, his rank was Padshah Zada Buzgur Marsaba or basically prince of the highest rank. In fact, one common belief was, I mean, common sort of idea for the people at that time was Dara Shikha was going to be the next successor king of Shah Jahan, which obviously did not, have, which was attempted, but you know, Aurangzeb did not let that happen. Dara Shikha has also been described as a liberal Muslim who tried to find commonalities between Hindus and Islamic traditions. He was very popular among the people of Delhi. I mean, January 2021, last year. The central government appointed a committee mainly to visit Humayun's tomb and uh, identify Dara Shiko's burial place because Dara Shiko was killed by Aurangzeb. But after killing him, Aurangzeb did not bury him simply. And he actually um, tortured him. Dara Shiko's grave is actually next to Prince Danyal and Murad's graves. As of August 2021, Archaeological Survey of India has also reported that it still has not located Dara Shiko's grave inside Humayun's tomb because Aurangzeb hated Dara, Dara Shiko. Aurangzeb considered Dara Shiko to be a competitor because Dara Shiko was anointed as the successor of Aurangzeb, which Aurangzeb did uh, successor of Shah Jahan, which Aurangzeb did not like. So eventually, Aurangzeb even defeated Dara Shiko after Shah Jahan fell ill in 1659 or 57. 
and on aurangzeb's order darashiko was killed in 1659 dara was the son of mumtaz mahal the most beloved wife of shah jahan emperor shah jahan in february 2017 new delhi municipal corporation even renamed uh, the dalhousie road as darashiko road for his period darashiko wrote a lot of books he is credited with commissioning several exquisite and still extant or extensive uh, books examples of mughal architecture among them were the wife nadira and nadira begum's tomb in lahore shrine of mia mir also in lahore darashiko library in delhi ahun mulla shah mosque in srinagar and pari mahal or garden palace in srinagar Ma, apart from Majmal Bahrain, there are a series of books which Dara Shikoh wrote during his period. Okay, that's a quick uh, point of uh, a quick couple of points over the current affairs for today, guys. So do follow me on Unacademy, Unacademy dot com slash Adred Shrivanar. That's S R I V E N R. Um, myself and uh, educator India Stop Educators are together coming on Unacademy and starting new batch. and uh, we are we are ready to help you with your preparation all you need to do is take the right step meanwhile the sunday 11 am do attend the combat tests see the questions 60 questions 50 uh, 50 questions 60 minutes and attempt them get a quick feedback of the questions after you attempt by the system itself and you'll actually know what your strengths and what your weaknesses are keep following this channel subscribe now you have a nice day thank you bye bye See you in the next video.